I've been here in this location since 1974, a Dublin graduate of West Cork extraction. And I've been in large animal practice here in the Gort, South Galway area on the edge of the burn since 1974. When we're younger and we're, we're growing our businesses, we really haven't time much for the past. But I've close on 50 years put into veterinary at this stage, and I have time to reflect. And you have time to look at what has gone before you, but you also have the satisfaction of being able to appreciate what other people did. Around 1995, 1999, I ended up uh, doing a, an open learning course at the University in Galway uh, which involved um, research on the early women pioneers. I was doing a, a thesis on the feminization of the profession so that involved me discovering the earlier women. Well, Cordangan Manor, just outside Tipperary Town, was where the Cust family were living at the time of the birth of their six children. Aileen was the second child born in 1868, and they, they lived there as land agents for the Smith Barrys in what must have been pretty idyllic circumstances. Big estate, open living, horses, hunting, you know, being able to live half wild in, in, the, in the countryside because they had a big run of land and they would have been well off by the standards of the time. And the fact that Cordangan uh, exists, is lived in by a veterinary family at the present time, all added to the, the, uh, the richness of the story. They had privileged background. They had a big house, they had servants, they had horses, big farm, ran a dairy. It would have been a great place for a child to grow up. These places would have maybe 60 to 100 horses, these yards. They would have raced, they would have bred, they would have had farm horses. And the veterinary profession and the farriers worked together and Alien would have been down the yard observing this. Indeed, at one point, it was commented on in the book that the veterinary people felt that Aileen would have made a great vet because she was so interested. There was only one biography on Aileen Cust, and it was published in 1990 by an English veterinarian called Connie Ford. And that was the foundation for most of the information. And there being no other biography, um, we were able to follow up on the story and add bits that may have been missing. Aileen's Irish connection stopped abruptly when her father died suddenly in 1878. The family, having no breadwinner, moved back to southern England, but part of Leopold's will was that he'd appointed a family in Northumberland to be guardians of the children which was on the Scottish border. The veterinary school in Edinburgh, just over the border, it was an obvious choice for to go to veterinary school in Edinburgh, encouraged by the open-mindedness of the Widrington family. Her own family were very much against this career choice. Indeed, she was disowned by her own family. Since 1844, when the Royal College began its first operations, they had never had a girl and they had no intention of ever having females into things. Veterinary was a male dominated profession. However, she continued with her studies, achieving um, the highest uh, awards in her class, winning gold medals for various subjects. And on graduation, the principal of the college, William Williams, wrote her a glowing testimonial which was the key to her being offered a job back in Ireland in Roscommon with Willie Byrne. Now, there are very few monuments to vets anywhere, 
But here in a prominent location, Willie is recognised uh, for what he was, a, a really well-respected veterinarian in the country, uh, had been a member of the Royal College, elected member, had um, likely an awareness of Aileen Cuss' plight in Edinburgh and the fact that the Royal College had denied her admittance and I, I have no doubt that he offered her the position in the full knowledge that she was a woman, although he claimed afterwards that he thought this was a man. We were fortunate in County Roscommon to come across a local tour guide, Marie Gilhooley. Marie discovered for us a local pharmacy that had records going back to 1891 and she prevailed upon the current pharmacist to trawl through ledgers and great good fortune, he came across two entries relating to Aileen Cost in 1910 and 1911. And like these were gems of findings. And can you see here, Miss Cost? What pleasure it was to see Aileen's name in these old ledgers. And here she actually got a prescription. It was made up. This is a reference right. number for the prescription that she actually bought herself. Setting up in practice or coming into a new area is always that little bit difficult and at that time extremely difficult for a woman. She began work, she was introduced to the clientele, she was really good at what she did, she was an expert horsewoman and settled into the job and gradually but steadily was accepted by the community. A county council position as a veterinary inspector becomes available in Mount Bellio, a rural district of County Galway. There was no vet living near it that had any interest in the position and they needed to fill the position. We're here in Mount Bellio, County Galway, where Aileen Cost held the post of veterinary inspector, uh, an appointment made by the Galway County Council back in 1905. The difficulty with this appointment, it was controversial because she was not a member of the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons, having been prevented to sit the exams at the time. However, the council felt it appropriate to appoint her and the letter making the appointment reads something like this. The council desire to confer the appointment of Miss Cust as veterinary inspector for the Mount Pellew district for the following reasons that she is fully fitted to discharge the duties of the position, that she resides in the district, that no person formerly a member of the Royal College resides in the district or convenient to it, that Miss Cost knows the district well. And the County and Council at this stage, uh, like all good Irish councils, gave an Irish solution to an Irish problem. They dropped the word veterinary and they appointed her as the inspector, which caused a good deal of controversy but she was in that position from 1905 to 1915 until she left and went to the First World War in France. When the war broke out, the English army were in real need of large numbers of horses. War being operated by horses, cavalry charges, pulling of guns, etc. Aliens clients would have been involved in selling large numbers of horses to the army. When the horses went patriotically, she followed the horses. And in 1915, she drove herself to the war and would have partaken in the large hospitals in Abbeville, where huge numbers of horses were treated. None of those horses ever came back. So her work would have dwindled. Her uh, acceptance by the community, considering that there was a civil war on, and that the big houses were being burned on a regular basis. The whole atmosphere had changed and Aileen was now very uncomfortable. Her house had been held up, her car had been taken from her. So the situation had changed. She felt uncomfortable. She was getting on in years. She was now 56. So she wound down her practice, sold her properties and retired to Southern England. I sent Kilroy, Brendan Gardner and myself came together at the beginning of 2021 um, 
with a view to focusing on how we would have Aileen Coss's memory revived, brought back center stage, and when we discovered that 2022 would have been the 100th year of her admission to the Royal Veterinary College, because she'd been denied admission for 22 years, having left school in Edinburgh in 1900. Um, it gave us that additional focus. Was a trailblazer. She was a successful veterinary practitioner. She was the first woman to work as a vet in Ireland, in Britain, and in my opinion, in Europe. 